now. Hi, everybody. Yeah, I'm Hannah, and I'm an Inclusive Support Advisor at UCLan. So we're going to talk you through how we support autistic students at UCLan through both the Inclusive Support and the Counselling Mental Health and Wellbeing team. Um, but first of all, I'd just like to draw your attention to this flow chart, which displays the autistic student's journey. Um, now, I was going to go through each and every single step there that usually an autistic student is required to undertake, um, but it took too long. And what does that say, that there's so many steps that's required? And in our opinion, in inclusive support, those steps come from DSA, and it's quite a complicated journey. So in order for a student to be entitled to the full support that they should receive at university, they need to take a lot of these steps. So the first one is obtaining a diagnosis. Now, that in itself can be incredibly difficult, incredibly frustrating to take into account waiting lists or just receiving a referral in the first place. Then the student needs to provide evidence and disclosure, a disclosure questionnaire to the inclusive support team at UCLan so that we can begin to implement reasonable adjustments and also advise them to apply for DSA. Um, DSA is Disabled Students Allowances. It's a government-funded grant for students with disabilities that can provide support, such as human support and equipment, um, throughout university life. And it's very important that students get this type of support because um, it can really help with the transition as well from college to university life. Um, but it's not just as simple as filling in a form for DSA. There's lots of other steps to do, and um, so they go, need to go on to something called booking a study needs assessment, which a lot of students and applicants struggle with, arranging and organising that. They then need to attend that study needs assessment. Once that's been done, um, a letter is wrote, written to DSA advising of what support they're entitled to, and then DSA write a letter to the student advising them of the suppliers to contact to implement this support. Now, that can be quite overwhelming, especially if you take into account, usually at this point in the, when they're doing in the journey, a lot of students or applicants are doing the, their um, A-levels or have coursework due in, and it's just something that can get put on the back burner because it's just too much to do all at once. And that's where the inclusive support advisor, somebody like myself, can come in and offer assistance with that. But if you compare this student journey to um, a, the type of journey that a student without a disability has to take, which is just completing UCAS, applying for student finance, which in itself is complicated enough, but then if you add on all of these other layers, it's quite frustrating, it's quite long as well. So that's why in inclusive support we recognise that and we have a lot of support available. So I'm going to talk about that support now. So, first of all, I'd like to draw your attention to our amazing Student Wellbeing Ambassador Service. Um, our Student Wellbeing Ambassadors are current students who've received full training to support students, um, and many of our students, um, our ASC students, receive support through peer support, peer mentoring, very important, um, orientation support, again, very important, especially in those beginning stages of university life, assistive technology training and library assistance. Now, it's also worth noting what I'd also like to draw your attention to here is our Student Wellbeing Ambassadors, or SWAs as we call them, um, some of them were previously supported through the service before they trained themselves and it's really fantastic to see this transition um, and to see this build, build up in confidence. Um, so that's something we're very proud of in inclusive support. Um, Secondly, uh, inclusive support advisors. Each student who discloses, each um, student who discloses their condition to inclusive support, whether they don't have sufficient evidence yet or anything like that, will be provided with an inclusive support advisor. And that inclusive support advisor, their role is to individually implement adjustments based on what that student's telling them that they need support with. So it may be things like needs no noise counselling headphones in class and for the tutor not to draw attention to this. It may be that they need specific support with group work or for that year presentations in a group setting on 
aren't probable to do so we need to do that one-on-one -on -one. so we have to do a lot of liaising there with the course team to check that you know is it okay for putting in these adjustments are these still meeting the course requirements and then of course as i mentioned earlier we also assist with implementing support through funding bodies such as dsa um because that is as i said a very complicated process so it might be that we need to put in interim support dsa can take a long time or it might be that the student isn't eligible for dsa so we would then look into providing interim mentor support such as study skills and and as well okay um, our transition events um, they ran over the last few years um, and they're really brilliant they usually take place over the summer period and they're directly for applicants before they begin the studies and again are led by our FWA service and our coordination team and inclusive support a lot of planning is required for these events as they provide applicants who've disclosed autism and sometimes other conditions the opportunity to experience the higher education environment and um, applicants who are invited are usually identified through their inclusive support advisor and um, so it may be that the applicant has said that they've had a lot of support in school and college and it may not be support that can be provided at, in at university or they've notified us that they really struggle with changes social interactions are, and are extremely anxious about coming to university so there is an opportunity for them to come onto campus meet with their advisor to discuss adjustments partake in social activities and complete tasks based on real life university um, scenarios things like timetable changes and um, which you know is part of university life and an autistic student can find quite difficult to deal with um, each applicant is also provided with a buddy through the SWA service who pro will provide peer mentoring support over the couple of days of the transition event. Now, of course, this year, due to COVID, we had to do the transition event remotely, something completely new to us, but it actually worked really well as it did help prepare students for this new shift in education that we're currently going through, which means we're doing a lot more remote work um, and less on-campus classes and activities okay and we also do information visits now these are more bespoke to an individual applicant rather than a group of applicants like transition events uh, they involve the applicant meeting with the course team and their inclusive support advisor jointly to discuss adjustments and support um, to be provided throughout the studies the advisor again usually identifies the applicant when it's anticipated that they may benefit from a pre-meeting alone with the course team before studies begin and also if required our accommodation service to discuss any adaptation needed in student hall now i'm going to hand over to my colleague jerry now and she's going to talk a bit more about her service and our collaboration work together and um, so as Hannah's already indicated through her element of presentation we, we provide a lot of support to the student community and our service has developed rapidly over the last five years and within that we've also had to take on student feedback and experience and that student feedback and experience has centered an awful lot around collaboration and therefore within the counselling mental health and well-being team we collaborate and work closely with our colleagues in inclusive support as we um, we know this achieves a better and holistic experience for the student and we also recognize that students with an ASD presentation may benefit more from a more collaborative support package um, therefore we've implemented more joined up working um, and we meet with our colleagues on a daily basis in inclusive support to re re review all referrals that come into our our service and that by doing that we, we've we've noted a, an increase in um, support from for, particularly for mental health across both teams so we, you know we're keen to make sure that um we, we we keep learning and work well together within the counseling mental health and well-being team well who are we we're a multidisciplinary team we are inclusive of counselors 
uh, mental health and wellbeing advisors who have backgrounds and specialisms in mental health nursing, psychological wellbeing, being practitioners, and from a wellbeing advisor perspective, uh, colleagues who have backgrounds of working in domestic violence and sexual health support, social workers and teachers, drugs and alcohol support workers, and uh, colleagues who have worked in a care, a care leave and estrangement background. Um, we hope by having such a diverse training background, we are able to support student community well, um, but we are always learning and we are always um, evolving and adapting. Last year, we um, recorded 64 reasons uh, for why a student may want support from our team. And we have 27 different referral routes for the staff and student community to be able to access support for us. We try and pull our key data out, and I do have a slide next that has stats on it, but just before we get to that, we, we see year on year that anxiety and depression are the two highest reasons for referral and support from our service. And we know that as a co-presentation of autism, often anxiety and depression are, are very much present. So, it, you know, it is, it's important to us that we um, put a system in place that highlights how we can get support to students as early and, 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 and with a reasonable, um, sorry, my voice is starting to go, I've just come back from laryngitis, um, with, you know, with, with a good support package in place for you. Year on year, we have seen uh, and recorded an increase for support requests. And as I've mentioned before, we know that collaborative uh, work with our colleagues and closest support has seen, particularly for mental health support, increase each year. Last year, we, we were 5,091 referrals into the service. And that was inclusive of 100, uh, sorry, just over 1,000 students accessing our counselling team as well. Um, we have adapted and developed our service, particularly in the past eight to nine months. Um, if you'd have asked our colleagues back this time last year if, if um, working online would have been something that we thought would have worked, we probably would have had some mixed responses. But what we actually are finding is our student community are dragging us into the 21st century and actually our online engagement with um, counselling, mental health and wellbeing is actually increasing and in, uh, in some areas. So we have adapted and we are still uh, providing um, a service across multiple platforms to students at this current time due to the COVID crisis. As much as we would like to, to achieve everything for our students, we have to work within the confines of achieving that within a university environment. So it's key that we work and collaborate with external support services and organisations. Um, on the slide that you will be able to see is a few of the agencies that we work with um, to ensure that the support we identify for students across the board and for students on the autistic spectrum is, is specialised to those support needs that are being presented. Um, so we will work in collaboration with services across the county and sometimes outside of the county to make sure that we are able to achieve the very best outcomes um, when support is requested. And just in from obviously just from a perspective, if anybody wants to contact us, we know we've got some limited time here, but if you want to contact us, please do. Um, we have on inclusive support at UCLan or at wellbeing at UCLan. Or in addition, if you want to send anything through the chat, we can pick it up via that and make contact with you outside of this forum. <laughs>